Hi, my name is Kai. Welcome back to another video of CS106A Homework Solutions. And today we're going to do assignment number two, problem number six. So as you can see in problem number six, there is a pyramid and you have to use the graphics program to create the pyramid and notice how it's centered and it's starting from the bottom. So we got to make sure it's centered, starting from the bottom. It has a set brick width, a brick height, and the number of bricks that you start off with. So that means that we are going to be subtracting by one brick as we go further up. Okay. So um, basically, I will uh, type out this code raw for you in this video so you can see how it works. Uh, don't kill me if I make a little mistake, but um, I'll try to make it flawless. Uh, well, so a couple things that you'll need is you'll first need um, a starting uh, variable, like where to position your starting brick. And so what I'm going to do is create another variable called private double starting x. Okay, and I will also create um, private double starting y. All right. And again, with these two variables, we'll initialize it to zero. Okay. And the reason why I'm not giving it its full uh, algorithm or equation is because, remember, if you initialize it outside the void uh, run box, the canvas is not even created yet. So if you were to call the method get height and get width, it's going to return a zero. So we're not going to um, give it its algorithm until we get to the run program. Okay. And the other thing that we need to do is create um, a count, a running count total of number of bricks. Because if you remember, um, looking at the private static final int values, those values can't change. As, as it was said in the lectures, um, those stay fixed. So we need to be able to keep a running total. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call something called call something uh, bricks left. And notice how I made it a double, and I'll explain in, in a little bit why I did that, so you can see what's up with that. And instead of initializing as uh, initializing that as zero, we're going to go ahead and call that uh, 14 or bricks and base. Okay, so this variable can be modified. So bricks and base can't be modified, but bricks left can be modified. Okay, so let's kind of get started. So let's call our variable starting x, and we're going to go ahead and set that as the first position right over here in the top left corner. So to do that, um, first of all, we need to call our get width. All right, that will give us the uh, width of the whole entire thing, and we're going to divide that by two to start from the middle. Okay. Again, this is my own method. So if you come up with your own, that's cool. This is just how I'm doing it. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract it by the length of this many bricks. So as you can see, that would be our bricks left, okay, times by each of those widths, widths. I guess that's plural, right? Widths. And then um, that would give you the total, right? But we're going to divide this by two because we're only doing one side, just like that. And if you're unsure whether or not it's mathematically correct, we'll go ahead and create some uh, parentheses over this. Okay, so it knows what to do first. I'm sure that it's right in terms of order of operations, but you can always be safe just by adding those things. Re-emphasize, right? <laughs> All right, so starting x, get width divided by 2 minus bricks left times bricks width divided by 2. Then we need our starting y value. Okay. That is going to be positive going down, right? Because it's not going to be observed as a negative number, but rather a positive number. So that would be our get height value. Okay. And we're, yeah, that would be our get height value. And we're starting from the top left corner right here. So we need to go ahead and subtract that by the height of a brick, just like that. Okay. Alrighty, so what makes this uh, file unique is what we're going to do now is encode a for loop in a for loop. So let's get started. So for int uh, in the value of row, we're going to initialize a variable called row. 
and as long as row is less than the number of bricks, oh, sorry, we want the, we want to know how many times it's going to do it. It's going to do it 14 times, right? Because there's 14 rows. And I'm going to have it increment it by one because we're going to go through each and every row. Now, if you want to leave comments, you can. You could say this builds the number of rows. Always helps for the reader to really understand how you programmed it. But since you're learning it from me, you're seeing how it's actually working. And now we've got to create the um, how to create the bricks in each row. So that would be four and column is equal to zero, initializing the column. And we're going to say as long as column is less than, and get this, we're not going to use bricks in base because first time it's going to have 14 bricks, but the second time there's going to be 13. And so if we use bricks in base, you know, that's an unchangeable uh, number. So we're going to go ahead and start using our own variable called brick left. Okay. And we can modify that later to decrease as we uh, create uh, each row. Okay. All right. So that is how you build the pyramid. Now, all that's left to do is pretty much create to create the brick in each uh, row in each column. So to do that, we need to construct the uh, gret. Okay. Use the gret constructor. We we'll call it gret brick equals to new gret, and that is just how you construct it. And now this part is where we uh, figure out how we're going to input the location and the width and the height. Now the width and the height is very easy, because that's literally just going to be the width of the brick and the height of the brick. So the last two, not so hard. Now how we're going to place the first two values, which is our position, is a little tricky, but try to see if you can get it. So what we do first is, since we know that we're starting from starting x, we're going to go ahead and put starting x. Okay. And then you have to consider this not just for this position right here, but rather for all these positions. And so here, if you start from here, how are you going to build that next brick? Wouldn't that start from here? All right. So to go from here to here, What's the difference? That's the length of the actual brick, or in this program we call it the width. So by one width, we're going to place our next brick um, you know, one width away. And then on our third brick, we're going to go ahead and put our third brick that's two widths away, fourth brick that's three widths away. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go by putting starting x, and then we're going to go ahead and add by the value of our column, okay, because it starts from zero, times by the value of our brick width, okay? And that's pretty much it for that part because as you can see, starting from here, you build the brick, that's the first brick, and notice how column is zero, but now that column is one, uh, it would skip over to this part and build the second brick. Okay. When column is two, it's going to skip over the two bricks and build the third brick. Do you see that? So that's a nice nifty little trick right there. Um, the next thing that you want to do is call the y direction. And for that, we're going to use the row. Okay. So initially, we are starting at y. Right? So if you look at it, that's this position. But as we increment it, so when um, row becomes one, we want to be one space higher. Okay, so in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and subtract it by uh, the row, okay, times by the brick height, like that. Okay, so as the row increases, since it starts from here, it will just go up, okay, so it's subtracting its way up until you get to the top, okay. And then, following that, we want to go ahead and add those bricks. So by adding those bricks, it's going to just layer them like a masonry. One, two, three, four, five, six, all the way across. And then it'll go to the next row and add those across. Now, there's one more thing that we didn't do that's really important, is that once we finish this row of bricks, 
we have one less brick left. Okay, and so what we want to do is decrement the number of bricks left. So we're going to say bricks left uh, minus much. Okay, so that you know by the time you get to the top, there's only one left, and you're done. Right. So looking at this, that's pretty much how the uh, app is built. So let's go ahead and uh, compile this. I keep saying app. You know, it's been a funny week and uh, basically apps have been on my mind. But anyways, pyramid, run the pyramid and let's take a look. Oh, uh oh, look what happened. Can we figure out what happened down here? Well, let me run it one more time so you know what I'm talking about. See what just happened? Basically, um, they're not offset, all right? So they all started in the same position while they're going up. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> All right, so then what we need to do is we need to consider um, a space, right? And so in order to do that properly, um, notice how that our value of our starting x changes as we're going up, right? And the answer is pretty obvious. Um, what happened here is that the value of our starting x never changed, you see? We called it the first time. And then once we ran it, it ran that same value of starting x. Even though bricks left did change, it didn't change the value of starting x, you see? So the easiest thing to do to fix this problem is to call that uh, starting x value again after you decrement the le bricks left, and that should fix the problem. So you hit compile again, and boom, there you have it, see? So that's why you should always troubleshoot and check to see, make sure everything is correct. Let's make sure the number of bricks are right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Good, perfect. And it just decrements as you go up. And there you have it. So this is my solution to the pyramid problem. And if you want to see the code, uh, just check out uh, the link below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will post future videos. Thank you.